Hello again, welcome back to another video. Uh, it's that time of the week, it must be another unboxing video, so I've got my, uh, my knife here ready. And, uh, let's see what we've got in here. I've got a sneaky suspicion what it could be, but oh, plenty of tape on this one. Anyway, box I do believe. Oh the packing slip. A box within a box. Sounds pretty cool. Uh, this one opens up like so Okay, this is quite an interesting one. Okay, we have an EFM. Um, you might have come across these, or you might not have done. This is the um, the only EF mount camera that is manual focus only. I introduced in 1991. It has the uh, the newer. I say newer. It's not new now, but um, the EF mount plastic mount on this one because it's a cheap camera um, but this is manual focus only so it uses autofocus lenses but it doesn't have an autofocus system built into it it looks in fairly good condition very plasticky very light entry level really designed for learning photography so not a bad choice exposure compensation shutter release big command dial it's got, it's got everything on it really Got the aperture of the lock, uh, exposure counter, film plane, hot shoe, and on this side we've got a range of shutter speeds on this side, and A for aperture priority I'm presuming. Maybe you can put that on A and that on A and get program mode out of it, not too sure on these. Uh, viewfinder film back opens little catch on the side it's very dark very black and depressing camera very plastic inside vertical shutter dx coding introduced in 1991 i think i've already said that not very many of these made not sold in japan apparently which is quite sort of interesting mm. it's got the quick load system where you just pull the leader out to the orange tab close the back and it winds it on it's also got power rewind. Now the interesting thing I quite like about this camera is that when you first load a film in, it moves all of the film over onto this side. And as you expose each shot, it winds it back into the cassette. So if you happen to open the back, the pictures that you've already taken aren't ruined because they're safely away in the canister and all you would ruin is the remainder of the film. That's quite a clever idea, I think. As far as more cameras don't have that. Got a couple of buttons up here, so that's probably. Oh, come on. To focus on that, surely to God. Self timer and probably an exposure lock. Because it hasn't got any AF points and it hasn't got an AF lock on it, so. Right, let's see if we've got any batteries for this. If I remember right, these take those funny 2CR5 batteries. Oh, helps if you have nails with these things. If you do them upside down as well, then they should drop down. Oh. God's sake. Okay. I can't get that to open. It's always my downfall, batteries and loading film. It never works for me. Oh, it says slide it that way, and it seems to stick. It's a bit weird, isn't it? Of course, it's a really snug fit, so I've got no chance of getting that in there. 
So it's going to be another retake. I think it might well be. God, oh dear, oh dear. Come on. That's why. Okay. Black hole or cow cutter in there. It looks clean enough. I've got a couple of these batteries kicking about. That can go into there. Turn that on to A. There's no um, no screen or anything. So, oh, okay. There go some life in it. So that I'm assuming is on aperture priority. Or is that on the timed exposure? Let's try that on. Yeah, so that's working on shutter priority. That'll be working on aperture. No, that will be working on aperture would be if you select it on this dial. Right, if you put that onto A and the other one onto A, that's probably program mode. Yeah, okay, see if I've got a lens that I can stick on that. I'll turn it off up there. It does seem to be working. <coughs> well, this is a bit crazy. This is a, uh, a bigger lens that weighs about twice as much as the camera body does, if not more. This is a 135, oh sorry, 135, 35mm f1.4. Like I say, there's no auto focusing, so you only focus by manual. But the one advantage is it does have the, uh, the aids in the centre of the viewfinder to aid you with manual focusing, which seems to have disappeared off of digital cameras. Nowadays, I don't think there's a dioptic adjustment or anything on it. That was maybe on the, the higher up versions. No, so I still need to wear my glasses to use this one. But yeah, it seems to be working fine. It's clean and tidy. Battery base good. That's on lock. That's why. That on A and then. Yeah, yeah, it seems to be working fine. So yeah, a bit unusual. Um, not very many of these sold, I wouldn't have thought, because back in the late 80s, early 90s, everyone was into autofocus. But yeah, just in, included out of uh, included out of inclusion. And uh, yeah. It'll do as a spare body, and I, I'm, I'm a fan of manual focusing anyway. Nine times out of ten, I focus manually, even with the autofocus lenses. So, but yeah, there's a, a manual focus film camera for EF mount lenses. Um, I wouldn't rate its durability particularly high. Not particularly expensive if you find these, don't pay too much for them. Um, a lot of them don't work. And it used to be a trick. Um, back when I first started in digital, I used to shoot with a Canon 20D. And I think people then used to take the screens out of these and um, put them into other cameras because it has that central focusing aid, if I remember right. So they were quite sought after, uh, sort of early 2000 sort of times, well, about the time of the 20D. Uh, to add the focusing aid into DSLRs because as soon as you've got autofocus they took all the manual focus aids away but yeah that's the camera for today folks um, very plain very simple um, but yeah useful little light backup body to carry around if you're a, an EF mount shooter and don't mind manually focusing Thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Comments, questions, queries, etc. down below as usual. And I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Oh, don't forget to like and subscribe, of course. Okay, see you in the next one. Thanks. Bye.